At a small tech startup, the development team was working quickly to identify new features. In their rush, they made a common mistake. They put their important API keys directly in the app's code. These keys gave the app access to services like payment processing and file storage. One day, a junior developer accidentally uploaded the whole project, including keys to a public GitHub repository. This means that anyone could see it, including hackers. After about two days, a hacker found the keys and used them to break into the company's payment service. They stole customer payment data and deleted important files from the company's cloud storage. When the developers realized what had happened, they quickly removed the project from the GitHub and canceled the API keys. But the damage had already been done. The company had to tell customers about the breach and work hard to recover their lost data. Their reputation was hurt and the customers were worried about using the service again. The big lesson here is that storing sensitive information like API keys directly in the code is risky. If they had used a safer way to store those keys, like in environment variables or secure system, they could have avoided the breach and saved their company a lot of trouble. In this episode of the Snakebite series, we are talking about insecure storage of sensitive information. Let's have a look at some other cases. For example, in April 2024, a security researcher discovered a critical vulnerability in Mozilla internal Slack channel. An admin API key for Jira was accidentally hard-coded into a Python script shared publicly in the channel. This API key gave admin level access to sensitive Jira data. Upon being informed, Mozilla quickly revoked the key and removed the script. Although the issue was out of scope, Mozilla rewarded the researcher with a bounty due to the critical nature of the exposure. And this is a real report. You can check this out from the link below in HackerOne. This is another case of storing sensitive data in an insecure way. And this is exploited in the wild. Another case we can look at is in February 2024, a security researcher found sensitive data information exposing on a US Department of Defense website using Drupal. After fuzzing the site, they discovered a publicly accessible file that contained hashed user data and other database information. This issue was reported to the VDP program. The vulnerability was validated and marked as high severity. Something as simple as it is is exploited in the wild and is critical as well. So if you are hunting on an application, how you can look for this vulnerability? If you can talk about some steps, the first step would be to search for exposed credential in the source code. You can scan public repositories to find hard-coded secrets like API keys or passwords. You can use tools like git leaks or manually search public repo. When you are searching for those keywords, you can search for patterns like API-key in capital letters or small letters or API key with no space. Or you can use keywords like authorization, token, access token, refresh token, DB password in capital letter or small letters, secret key, client secret or JWT secret. You can search for keywords like this in those GitHub repo to find those sensitive information. Or you can look for those hard-coded secrets in config files. Developers sometimes store sensitive data in publicly accessible config files. Check common files such as .env and config.php for hard-coded credentials. .env files are commonly used to store environment variables for the applications. They often contain sensitive information such as database credentials like username and password, API keys and secrets, third-party service credentials like payment gateways, authentication providers, 
or other application settings. And in config.php file, it is used in PHP application. So if you are hunting on an application that is using PHP, you can look for config.php file. And if it is accessible, you might discover database connection details like host, username, password, and database name, or API keys and tokens, or path to directories and files used by the application. There is another file, settings.yaml. These files are frequently used for configuration in various programming environments. They might contain database configuration settings, API keys and tokens, and environment-specific settings related to production and staging. Okay, we just talked about two ways you can look for those secrets. Now there is another way. If you're analyzing an application, open up your burp suite, capture all the requests and responses, analyze every function, and you will see that some API response might contain sensitive information. So this one is based on your analysis, how good you are at it, how patient you are at it. For example, some application return more data than they are supposed to return that are unnecessary and could be exploited by attackers. Another way is find publicly exposed files. Attackers often find sensitive data in exposed files like backups and logs. You can use directory fuzzing tools like fuff, um, derbuster, or GoBuster to locate these files on the server. Eventually, it depends on what word list you are using. So you have to do your research on that. Now, this one is a simple case where you can just look for public log files or error pages that expose information like tokens or stack traces. The next thing you can do is check for public access to cloud storage, like Misconfigured cloud storage such as AWS S3 buckets can unintentionally expose sensitive files to the public. It is essential to test this cloud storage configuration to ensure that public access is not allowed. Now, in this case, you can use tools or scripts to enumerate cloud storage buckets. For example, you can use AWS CLI that might reveal files that are stored within the bucket. Now, you can do your little search for some more commands in it. This podcast is not a tutorial. Let's say you found a bucket. You can try to access it by trying URLs like https colon slash slash bucket name dot s3 dot amazon aws dot com and see if the bucket is publicly accessible. Now, another way is review code comments for API tokens. Developers may accidentally leave sensitive information in code comments. Check code comments in public repositories for exposed credentials or API keys. Sometimes, even the URLs contain sensitive data, such as session tokens, that shouldn't be passed in the URLs. Inspect those URLs and network requests to ensure no sensitive data is exposed in query parameters. With multiple examples and an idea on how you can actually test for this vulnerability when you are hunting on an application, you must have learned something or realized something that you are missing. It could be new to you or it could be a reminder to you. If you learned something new, I would like to know that in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed listening to this mini podcast. And if you did, don't forget to share it with your friends. That's it for today. And I'll see you in the next one.